always do so by my cell phone. You have that number on the back of your bulletin. Also, friends, want to say thank you to all who participated uh, in the surprise <laughs> gathering for my birthday uh, two Sundays ago uh, before I headed out of town for a birthday trip weekend. Thank you all for your cards, your tokens, your uh, gifts and words of affection. They are all appreciated. Friends, we are so grateful for all of our guests who are joining us this day. We'd ask that you give us the honor of completing a connection card. You can do so either electronically uh, with the, oops, with the uh, QR code that's on the screen. You will also find that on the inside cover of your bulletin as well. If you need a more tactile uh, version of that, our ushers will be happy to give you a hard copy of the connection card. Simply want to be able to offer you a more personal word of welcome and appreciation for your presence with us this day. Feel free to do so. Uh, friends, we do count those numbers as a part of our church goals for this year. Uh, if you are a guest with us, if you're joining us online, or if you're joining us here in person, please take an opportunity to complete our connection card. Joys and concerns, friends, can be shared all the way up until the very end of the sermon. For those of you here in the sanctuary, you can text the number. Uh, that's my cell number that's on your screen. Those come directly to me. For those of you who are joining us virtually, you can put those comments and prayer requests, joys and concerns in the comment section. We'll pull those and have those ready for our time of prayer this day. Again, joys and concerns can be shared uh, in the comment section for those of you who are joining us as our part of our virtual worship community and via that cell number that's on your screen for those of you who are here in person. Again, friends, uh, we remind you that we are in need of a new head teller and a new head treasurer. If you are interested in those positions, want more information about either, uh, feel free to contact myself, Doug Gress, Keith Miller, or Debbie Miller. Uh, we are hoping to have uh, someone in place so that Keith and Debbie can train them uh, before they roll off at the end of this year. Uh, so if you have had the Lord strangely move upon your heart, it's not heartburn, come and have a conversation with me, amen? Amen. 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 Next Sunday, our, you're good, you're good. Awesome, next Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday. Our outreach committee is going to be preparing sandwiches for the NOAA project and they are asking uh, for many hands as uh, the uh, quote from Sir Bervis of Hampton said, many hands make for light work. So we are looking for many hands to make for light work next Sunday immediately after service. Uh, in addition, friends, on next Monday, next Monday? Yes. Next Monday is our annual church conference or what uh, those are who are in the uh, 501c3 sphere know as your annual meeting. Every 501c3 uh, organized corporation has to have an annual meeting. Uh, this is our annual meeting. All full members are invited to participate. If you are interested in participating, our church conference annual meeting is gonna be virtual again this year, and so you'll need to submit an email to our church office uh, to Phyllis Anderson in order to request not only the Zoom link, but the packet of information that we will be discussing for that. Again, our annual church meeting is going to be next Monday, October 7th at 7 p.m. Again, that's next Monday, October 7th at 7 p.m. With that, friends, we prepare ourselves to move forward into this time of worship with our opening hymn for this day. Our opening hymn this day is Blessed Assurance, which can be found on page 369 in the hymnal, Blessed Assurance which can be found on page 369 in the hymnal or on the monitor as well. We begin this day of worship with that wonderful hymn, Blessed Assurance, number 369 in the hymnal.
join me in our opening prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all the angels. Praise the Lord, all the hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heaven and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for the Lord's people. Praise for all the Lord's faithful ones, for the people of Israel who are near their Lord. Praise the Lord. The scripture reading this morning is from Acts 3, verses 1 through 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the uh, temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Blind, but now. 
going to invite the children to come down. God loves me all the time. Why don't you sit over there? All right. All right. Look at that and matching. All right. You can tell they're related, right? Okay. Oh. All right. So we heard this story about um, Peter who healed this person who was outside the temple and was always outside the temple, um, and he wasn't able to work, so people gave him money, um, and Peter walked up to him and healed him, helped him to walk when he hadn't been able to walk all of his life. And that's a miracle that God gave Peter the ability to heal this one who wasn't able to walk. So as I thought about this man who had suffered so much all of his life, I thought about these. Everybody know what these are? Yeah, they're crutches. Yeah, they're crutches. And they're what people use when they hurt their leg or their foot and they can't put weight on it. They use crutches, right, to help them walk. And as I thought about this man who Peter was able to heal and thought about God helping Peter to heal this man, I realized how often God helps us to heal others. Like doctors, exactly, like doctors, like crutches who help people to get well when they hurt a leg or an ankle, or like all kinds of things that God gives us the ability to do to heal others when they're not well or when they're hurting. And because God gives us that ability in doctors and tools and all kinds of things like that, we are called to use those to, whenever we can, to offer healing, whether it's someone who's hurt or sick or sad or lonely, God gives us the power to offer healing. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. Take off your slippers. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be taking off my slippers, I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So she got healed, right? So that's God working through the people, the doctors who helped heal us. I, I, uh, my crutches story is when I broke my knee, my son thought I wasn't um, coordinated enough to use crutches, so I had to use a walker. I hopped on a walker. That was fun. But God provided the doctors and the walker, and I got well. So I think it's important for us to know that God offers healing in all kinds of ways. And while Peter was able to do this through God uh, without the help of a doctor or tools, we get doctors and tools and all those things that help us heal 
ourselves and help us to help others get well, right? Okay? Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for healing. We know that it comes from you, through us, and you call us to offer that healing to those around us. In the name of Christ. Amen. You may go to Sunday school. Jones. Those of us staying in the sanctuary to share in this wonderful hymn, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. It is number 351 in your hymnals if you prefer to use those. Amen. Uh, I had the wonderful pleasure of attending worship service with my older brother when I was away, and uh, their mass choir sang that song and brought me to tears uh, as more than 30 voices gathered with a community of folks I could not number, giving God glory, honor, and praise. Friends, today we're going to continue our series Actions of an active church. Actions of an active church. 
and our journey through this book of Acts. Thus far, we have discovered an active church discerns God's purpose, is patient with God's vision, and seeks to speak the contextual and cultural language of the people they serve. Today, friends, our message is entitled, What I Have, I Give. What I have, I give. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask your, uh, your grace and peace would fall upon us as we open ourselves to you fully, mind, heart, body, and soul, that you might use us as your instruments of glory, honor, and praise. We yield ourselves to your will and to your way. I now decrease and ask that you would increase that every word that is uttered, every revelation that is given, will give glory to you. This we pray in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, and all God's people together said, Amen. What do you have in your hand? God asks Moses this question as he's preparing to send him back to Egypt and to Pharaoh. Moses has been asking a question, trying to get out of the responsibility that God has asked him to go back into Egypt, to go back to Pharaoh, to, as the songwriter says, let my people go. And so Moses asks, how can I prove to them that you sent me? What kind of sign, what kind of wonder will I perform for them? And God says to Moses, what's in your hand? Well, Moses simply had a walking stick in his hand, crutches, if you will, a walker, if you will. He had in his hand a usual instrument and tool that he used to get around from place to place, that he used in his craft of tending the sheep. God says, I can take that ordinary thing that you use each and every day, that you don't consider special, I can use that to do something wonderful. I can use that to accomplish monumental things. As people of faith, God asks us the same kind of question. Posed to Moses in a proverbial sense, what's in your hand? What do you have that can be offered to God to transform families and communities? In our text, we find the disciples, Peter and John, on their way to the temple for prayers. Outside the temple at the gate called Beautiful is a man begging for alms. Let's not call him a man. Let's call him Brad. We don't have any Brads in here today. No Brad? All right. We'll call him Brad. Brad is brought to the gate called Beautiful each and every time that they come in to worship in order that he might beg, that he might plead with others to provide for him. There were no social security. There was no way for him to provide for he or his family to provide for him. Brad had to require and beg for the mercy of others as they passed by on their way into the temple. Brad had a great strategy. Get them before they go into the temple. Don't get them when they come out. Brad had a great process. He says, uh, uh, if I couldn't guilt trip you with my condition, maybe as you're going into the temple, you might start thinking, well, God may not be pleased if I don't at least do something for this man. Brad would stay there, but he recognized his lowly plight, so he would rarely make eye contact with anybody. He would just be that boy's alms, alms. The text tells us that he was born lame from birth that he had to have people carry him each and every day to that gate called Beautiful. And on this particular day, he encounters two people he had never seen before, thinking that they might be rich travelers from another place. He uh, uh, uses his best loud voice, alms, alms. And the text tells us that Peter looks at him intently. Now, some of us might read into that with a look of contempt or disgust, as sometimes people do when they see someone begging or seeking assistance. But no, Peter looks at him with intention in order to determine what this man's heart condition was, in order to determine whether this man was really seeking simply to get alms or to have something more happen for him. Peter says to him, look at us. And Brad looks at them with intention, saying that if you're asking me to look at you, you are giving me permission to break this cultural code that we can now make eye contact, that you can see me and I can see you. Eye contact's a wonderful thing, friends. Make eye contact with somebody long enough, all of a sudden they start getting nervous. You can start playing guessing games like who's going to blink first. And you find yourself, as many kids do, trying to do all kind of stuff. (laughs) To see who's going to play first. But that eye contact lets someone know you see me. I have been seen 
by you. You're not looking over me, not looking past me, not discrediting me. And so in that moment, Brad knew someone saw him. And Peter says to him something that's greatly disappointing for someone who was hoping that eye contact and presence and being seen was going to be a great blessing. He gives them a word of disappointment before he gives them a blessing of healing. He says to him, silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, I'll give to you. Now, I can imagine in Brad's mind, he was saying to himself, all right, silver and gold are the highest kind of currency. There are other forms of currency, so I'm expecting to get a pence or some copper piece, some, something that is not as valuable, but I'm still going to be thankful for it. But you didn't have to ask me to look at you in order to give me that. He's thinking to himself that I'm not going to get what I was hoping to get, but what Brad gets is something that he never imagined he would ever receive. Peter says to him, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Now, unlike the man at the pool of the Bethesda, where Jesus heals him, who came to the pool each and every day, hoping that he would be the first one to put his finger into that pool in order to be healed, Brad came to the gate called Beautiful, not seeking to be healed, but seeking only to get alms. And so for Peter and John to come by that gate, for him was his blessing. For them to come by, there was his opportunity to receive something he did not understand that he needed or wanted or ever anticipated that he would ever receive. But Peter and John gave him what they they had silver and gold we don't have but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth stand up and walk now you have to understand for Brad this is an experience that he's only seen people doing he's seen people walk past him each and every time they walked into the temple but he has never done this himself and so He's trying to figure out how to do this thing that he's never done before. And for those of us who've had children, you realize and you remember those moments where they started figuring out, wait a minute. Okay, hold up. Let me grab onto something. Wait a minute, hold up. I think these things are more than good for crawling around. Hold up, let me figure it out. All right, there's one. Okay, okay, all right, all right. I'm steady, all right, there's two. Okay, okay. I'm up. And then our joy turns to terror as we realize they're up. And they look at us with joy as they stumble and take those first brave steps. And we celebrate them. We lift them in the air and they're happy. And then all of a sudden we realize the terror of them also realizing these things are good for more than just walking. Once they get steady under themselves and they start taking off and running and you realize I'm too old to be running. <laughs> oh, I should have had my children much younger, younger, younger. Brad stands, realizing that his ankles and his legs are strong, and he decides, I'm not just going to walk into the temple. I'm going to leap. I'm going to jump. I'm going to celebrate. These things that were useless to me are now something that I'm going to give God praise and glory with. Brad encounters two people that change his life forever because they were willing to give him what they had. Which brings us to what an active church does. The actions of an active church, friends, an active church empowers its people to facilitate wholeness and freedom in others. Seeking to offer not just temporary relief of affliction, but a life-changing transformation. Not simply offering them tips and tools to come out of, but providing for them resources and places to go. One of the great gifts that we have in the metropolitan Detroit area is CAS Community Social Services. We partner with them along with the NOAA project in order to provide for those who are less fortunate than, our, than we are, but those services also provide them with a way not simply to take a sandwich, not simply to do a service, but to live something different. Cash Community Social Service has made nationwide news because of its tiny house communities located around its property. It took vacant land that no one wanted and said, we're going to transform these into opportunities for folks to move from homelessness to home ownership and from home ownership to the dignity of being able to do something they've never done before or hadn't done in a long time. More than simply seeking to offer wholeness and freedom, indeed, they offered them the ability to see something different. 
John and Peter give Brad what he has never experienced before, and he quickly turns to praise. He didn't turn and go somewhere else and start to see his family say, look what's happened to me. He goes into the temple with them saying, I need everybody to see what these two men have done for me. Which brings us to the second thing that active church does. The action of an active church is not simply to offer wholeness and freedom, but also to assess and celebrate the insights, the skills, the abilities of its members that they might offer those in service to others. Indeed, very few of us are multimillionaires or billionaires. If you're keeping it secret, that's all right. I understand. Some of us have just enough to live on. Some of us have a little bit more to live on. But there's something that you have that no one else has. There's a skill, there's an ability that you have that no one else has. Not everybody wants to or will stand behind here and can preach or do the things necessary to go to seminary in order to be equipped. Not everybody has the skills or the gifts to sing in this choir. Not everybody has the skills and gifts in order to be an usher at the door because you don't smile as often as you need to. Not everybody is able to have the accounting skills in order to be in our finance department. Not everybody is able to administer and organize things well, but you have something no one else has. And God is asking you the same question he asked Moses. What's in your hand? What do you have that you can use for service? Don't look for someone else to do it. I'm asking you to step up, do what you can do with what I've given you. Be a blessing to someone. Again, you may not be a good public speaker, but that's okay. If you can sit with people and let them know that they are heard and seen, that's a blessing. What do you have that you can give in service to God that God might use it to be a blessing to others? Peter and John demonstrate the attitude that Jesus wants us to embody, to have a joyful and joy-filled service to be apt and aptly given these gifts, knowing that it's not about us, but it's all about what we can do with those things that God has given us. John and Peter come to this man, Brad, at the gate and say, we don't have silver and gold. We can't enrich your life by giving you financial means, but we can change your life by helping you do something you've never done before. And in doing so, that will change the trajectory of your life. What wisdom? insights, skills, and ability do you have that you can use in order to be a blessing for the kingdom of God, that others might know that you see them, that you've heard them, that you are the answer to someone's prayers. Just do me a favor. I'm not going to ask you to touch nobody. Just look at them. Look at somebody to your left and to your right and realize that's the blessing that someone's been praying for. That's the blessing that God has been preparing for someone's blessing for the lifetime. That you are sitting next to someone who has in their ability, in their hand, the blessing that will transform somebody's life. The question is, will you give what you have? Peter says, I have no silver, I have no gold. But what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. What I have, I give. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is time for the um, offering invitation. We appreciate your continued and financial support of this community of faith. For those worshiping virtually, you may mail in or drop off your offering to our address, 33112 Grand River, Farmington, Michigan, 48336. You may use PayPal, directing your offering to First United Methodist Church of Farmington. For those worshiping in person, the ushers will come forward to receive our tithes and offerings. As the ushers receive our gifts, please sign the attendance pad found toward the center of your pew and pass it along to your neighbor. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Help us to be generous givers, both of our money and our lives, 
that we might make a difference in our church and community. Amen.
Amen. We want to thank our ushers for bringing our gifts of tithe and offering forward. And as they uh, depart from the chancel, we are mindful of the things that God continues to do in and through us as we turn our attention now to our time of prayer for our joys and concerns. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your service. So friends, we have much to be in prayer for and much to continue to celebrate. We continue to lift those in prayer who are in need, like the people of Morocco who are recovering from an earthquake, the people of South Rockford, or Rockwood, I should say, South Rockwood United Methodist Church who are repairing from tornado damage. We lift up Charles and Brian and Mandy Kempton. We lift the people of Hawaii who are recovering as well from uh, devastating fires. We lift the people of Ukraine and Russia, those citizens whose nations are at war, and we lift Matthew and Nicholas Walter, James and Winnie Lanstra, along with Sue Hartag. We pray for those who are in need of God's healing presence to fall upon them. We lift Virginia Packard, Chelsea Imus Greenleaf, Brenda McClendon, Pat Shuffler, Amelia Berry, Ken Berry, Paul King, Mildred Tyson, Diane Lynn, Ethel Shapiro, Martin Nadrowski, Monet Heath, Janice Cresswell, and Karma Houston, along with Sue Hartat or Sue Jackson, Brian Lim, and Dave Evans. We also lift Ruth Yule's sister and niece who are having health challenges at this hour in this moment. We lift all those who are battling with various forms of cancer, including Don McCourt, Norma Mickey, Michael Jackson, David Schultz, Don Gray. Matthew Jones and Thomas Lee, as we lift those families that find themselves in seasons of grief and sorrow. Uh, friends, we have been praying for Carol Brands and Carol Brands has made her transition to glory. We have been lifting and praying for John King and John King as well has made his transition to glory. His service will be October 8th uh, here in the sanctuary that Sunday afternoon. We also lift uh, the family of Gloria Morrison uh, who made her transition. Her services are listed on our Facebook page and will both be listed on Facebook and our website along with John King's arrangements. We lift up the Reverend Eric Stone who made his transition along with Tina Fisher and Larry Anton. And we lift the family of Angelique Helen, all who are going through seasons of grief and sorrow. And we lift those who are grieving as a result of tragic means, especially as a result of mass shootings. Friends, I offer you now a moment of silent prayer for those names and situations that were lifted, along with those that are on your hearts and minds as well. A moment of silent prayer. Come Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts this day. We yield ourselves, recognizing that you're able to do more with any situation that we present to you than we could ever imagine or think, that our own devices are finite and pale in comparison to what you're able to bring into existence. And so, Lord, allow us to partner with you to be a blessing to others, that we might see your grace and your love extended throughout. We lift those who find themselves in need of direction those who find themselves in need of peace and comfort, we ask that you would allow us to be your ambassadors of peace, your blessings of hope and joy. Speak now over all those who find themselves in need of your healing touch, whether they're in hospitals or at homes or rehabilitation facilities. Allow the pain to cease and allow healing to move swiftly in their bodies. Lord, we ask now for those who are battling with various forms of cancer, that they will continue along their treatment pathways with grace and courage, and that we who love and care for them will be able to encourage them and strengthen them as they journey. And be with us all, Lord, in various seasons of sorrow and grief, for you know what it's like to lose. So comfort us and allow us to be your hands and feet of comfort that those who find themselves going through seasons of sorrow and grief will know that they are not alone that in the moments when the silence seems to be deafening and the walls close in, that we remind them that we are there with them. Come Holy Spirit, 
Continue to speak to our hearts, offer us grace and comfort as we offer that same grace and comfort to others, that we might be the gift for others that you are for us. As we join our voices in that model prayer that Jesus offers to us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this day, friends, can be found on page 2036 in the faith we sing, give thanks. 2036 in the faith we sing, give thanks, and we'll sing that twice. And so, friends, as we prepare to dismiss from this place, but never from the presence of God, we go forth, ready to share what we have in order to be a blessing with others. For you are a blessing from God. Now go be a blessing to someone else. Have a great day. Have a great week. In Christ's name, amen.